I'm cycling savvy instructor John Allen riding with front and rear facing video cameras. Let's see how to make a difficult challenge easy. Eakins Oval, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. May I go? I'm starting on Spring Garden Street at North 22nd Street. I look left and merge out into the street. Here I'm as far to the right as possible without being in the door zone of parked cars. But this position, though at the edge of the bike lane, would invite side swipes. I merge again to get to the leftmost through travel lane. I wait for the traffic light at North 23rd Street. Some people might describe this moment as calm in the middle of the storm. But where's the storm? The light changes and I enter the intersection. The lane to my left was a left turn lane, and so I am now riding in the leftmost, the number one, lane of Spring Garden Street. I am in lane control position. I am not in the bike lane, which is two lanes over to the right. Why is that? It's so I can enter the Eakins Oval and go all the way to the inside in one step without having to merge across multiple lanes of traffic as I did before. Once again, I'm in lane control position. This makes me more visible despite the left curve in the oval. Motorists sometimes cut to the inside on curves. A motorist catches up with me and waits behind at the traffic light where Kelly Drive enters from the right. Because all of the traffic in the oval enters and exits on the right, riding around on the inside is easy. When the light changes, I release to the shoulder on the left, which is in effect a bike lane, although not designated as one, and with a friendly wave, I invite the motorist to overtake me. The motorist apparently has not noticed that the light changed or noticed my wave. Let's be thankful that this was an instance of distracted stopping, which resulted only in delay. The motorist finally catches up with me as I approach the traffic signal where Martin Luther King Drive and Spring Garden Street eastbound enter the oval. I release so the previously distracted motorist can overtake. I'd rather not deal with this motorist in the next phase of my trip around the oval. The oval is six lanes wide here, plus the bike lane way over at the right side. By riding at the inside, I can take advantage of a lane split to get into the correct lane to continue around the oval without having to merge across even one lane. I am now in the rightmost of four travel lanes because I am going to leave the oval at the next exit. During this long wait for the traffic light, let me explain that this was the first time I made a trip between the same two points around the oval. My intention was to use lane splits and traffic signal timing, as you've already seen, to avoid the need to merge across lanes of traffic. I had reviewed Google Street Views and Satellite Views, but as you're about to see, I was not yet entirely familiar with the lane configuration. The traffic light changes, and I proceed. I head for the bike lane. It looks as though it will take me where I need to go. I might have to merge over into the next lane. Oh, this is unexpected. Up ahead, the rightmost travel lane becomes a right turn only lane. The markings in the street invite bicyclists to merge at an arbitrary location. Don't take the bait. Look back and merge when it's safe. You don't want to merge right to left when a motor vehicle is merging left to right. A minivan turns right on red. Now, is this driver just yielding to pedestrians? Well, not doing a very good job of it waiting in the crosswalk. The driver could turn right now. 
but is still waiting with the turn signal on. When a driver is doing something unexpected and unexplainable, that is an especially good reason to be wary. And now, again, still waiting. I notice that the traffic light is about to change and move forward slowly. Come on. Prepare to accelerate. Oh. I have a principle of defensive driving. Hey, I love that. Don't pass the first vehicle waiting. You don't know which way it's going to go. I'm now back on Spring Garden Street after making a 360 degree loop around Eakins Oval. I merge out of the bike lane to avoid the door zone hazard. Then I merge over to the right because I'm going to exit the street, but I do look back in case someone might be turning right. I didn't realize that the street ahead is one way right to left. Here my little trip around the oval comes to an end. But about the red bike Friday that got here before I did. It's Karen Carabells. This photo, which her husband Harold took, shows that they both were handling the situation at that last intersection better than I did. Karen and Harold had taken advantage of a lane split so they would not have to merge as I did on approaching the intersection ahead. They approached it in the lane to the left of the bike lane, giving them more clearance from overtaking vehicles. A 360-degree tour of Eakins Oval is certainly something that most people wouldn't do except as a demonstration or in a class as we did. But for every movement through or around the oval, there are some good ways to go. You might use a crosswalk to avoid merging across multiple lanes of moving traffic. This route connects easily back to Ben Franklin Parkway, whose start is shown in the circle. This is the last part of that route. I suggest ignoring the incorrectly positioned no bicycles sign. Northwest 24th Street does not become a limited access highway ramp until after you turn left here. You might also use a crosswalk to get to the inside of the oval. Thanks to the traffic signals, once traffic starts moving to enter the oval, there is none coming around in the oval. And you can use the same trick to enter the paths inside the oval. A good route from Spring Garden Street to the Greenway along the Schoolkill River goes behind the museum, avoiding the oval entirely. Google Street View is very helpful in scouting routes. Here's one from the Greenway to the oval. There are many more possibilities, so check them out on the computer, then get on your bicycle and try them out. Thanks for watching.